For this video, we're going to cover what the HUD is, or well, actually how you can control it, but we're also going to look at how we can control our inventory and some action filters. We get a lot of people that come and use the engine and they start to walk around, and then they don't understand exactly how to get rid of the HUD, and they don't understand exactly how to get rid of the weapon itself. So it's not too hard, but we'll go over it real quick. If we go to Entity, I can go to Default, and I want to grab a flow graph entity. I'm going to press the O key just so I know it snaps to the geometry. I'm going to press the O key again and then I'm going to move it up. Let's rename this to inventory underscore FG and then we'll right click and we'll call this one logic underscore FG. So what we want to do is go into the flow graph editor now, and so tools, flow graph. We can go ahead and dock this in the middle because we're going to do most of that inside of flow graph. Go back to entities, logic, and inside of here we know that we want to grab a start node. So by right clicking we can get add start node, and we want to go to debug. And the first thing that we want to do is get a console variable, and this is going to hide the HUD. So we'll do HUD underscore hide, and we'll set this to true. So on output, I want to set my console variable to that. Let's go back to our world and see what happens. So if I jump in, you can see that I no longer have my HUD on the screen, and that's because of that console variable. The next thing that I wanted to do was actually get rid of the gun. I don't want to have anything. So we can go to the inventory section, fold this out just a little bit, and you'll notice down here we have item remove all. We'll go ahead and go quick select, so pressing Q, I'm going to type in local, and we want to choose the local player. And we're going to run the entity ID in there, and then we'll say on activate through the start node. So now if I go in and press Control G, I no longer have a weapon. So my body's still there. If I were to press F1, I can go back to third person. But obviously I don't have a gun there. So the next thing that maybe we want to do on top of this, and it'll be the final thing that I cover, will be the action filter. So I want to go in and do Q action filter and on start I want to enable the filter itself so let's go in and we'll say no move and you have all of these different other things you have button mashing sequences item pickup you have the different menus all of this can happen based on whatever this filter exposes some people only like the UI so say you bring up an in-game menu you would use this filter with only UI so for this one, we're just going to say no move. And then I'm going to surround this with a comment box. Uh, player control. So if I were to go in now and I move my mouse around, I can actually move. But if I went to walk, I'm pressing the WASD keys and I can't move at all. So this would be a case where you're able to move around inside of your level, but your player isn't actually able to walk. So it doesn't matter. He can't jump and he can't walk around. So this has been a quick overview as far as how you can control not only the player's HUD, but you can control the weapons, and then you can also control the movement of the player. The only thing that people tend to do from here is they drive to a different camera and then they will beam the player to a different spot on the map, which we can show actually in this video. It's not very hard to do. So if I were to take this camera, so I want to create a camera myself. It's a miscellaneous. Do camera. I'm going to press Control and Shift and snap it. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Unfold the transforms. We'll set this to 90. And then with this camera view, we're going to go ahead and say 
I want to do camera. We'll do view and on start. We're going to add the selected entity and say enable. And then with the player himself, we can do a tag point. So we'll have them over there. Call this one beam tag. And so what I want to do is take a beam. So we'll do Q beam. And we want to take the local player actually. And on start, we'll beam him. And making sure we have that selected, we can right click and we'll add that selected entity and we'll say the position is right here. We'll expand this out just a little bit. So now if I were to come in and I would force my camera view, I can't actually move around at all because there's no actual crosshair and I'm not on the player himself, but now I'm not able to move the player around. So this is an extreme example, but this is where you would actually have the player go way off the map so he wouldn't interrupt your level, and then you could still proceed onward without having to completely remove the code of the player, as the controller movement would still be in the, the sounds, and then potentially if you fell off the map, the screen would go red. So we're completely eliminating that chance through this procedure.